Hey guys, Sullivan here in Philadelphia. One year ago, I stood, well, first I fell on my butt. Then I stood out here and shared one of the biggest messes in my garden that needed attention. And I had set a pretty ambitious goal. I did a whole bunch of videos in the month of February talking about the redesign for this area because it was important that I do it because it was the second time I was doing this Potager garden design. It needed to be functional. So I'm trying to get the view the same as it was a year ago. Uh, it was a, like a drizzly sleet, kind of awful day. Today at least it's sunny, if a little cooler. So let's turn around and see how I did. So here we are. Definitely still a lot of work in progress, but so much better than it was. So let's sit down at the table and chairs and I'll talk you through. Well, first of all, I am, as you can see, in the process of installing the paver flooring in the greenhouse. And I am taking my time with this because these pavers weigh 100 pounds each and it's exhausting. Essentially, where we're sitting in the Potager Garden 2.0, um, I had some raised bed, vegetable growing space. I had pots. I had I have flowers absolutely everywhere, and I loved the design. I didn't spend a lot of time leveling the ground or anything, but it was just like simple, and everything was centered around this beautiful old hundred year old sugar maple tree that was on our property. Uh, it's right next to our driveway. It's next to, uh, we have a, like a parking pad where you can park another car. And I loved that tree. It had the most beautiful, like, it looked like a tricolor maple. The leaves were that, like, amazing coral, orange, tequila, sunrise kind of colors in the fall. And so as much as we had a lot of trees on this property that needed to come down because they were um, in decline or just kind of old and had been pruned badly and things like that, um, we really tried to save that tree. It, the, the arborist that we work with had told us, eee, it's not doing so great. The spotted lantern flies really like maples. It, it, it had been a, a target for them. And, uh, but we really wanted to keep. Uh, in 2021, uh, mid spring, we had a tremendously unusual windstorm and 70 mile an hour wind gusts came through and we heard something crack from inside the house and we came out and a couple of really big limbs had come off of the maple tree and we sent a camp my the drone up and saw that the main leader had split it, it needed to come down so it came down uh, in June, which is right when I'm normally planting the vegetable beds full of the things that we're going to eat through the summer. And we had the stump ground because we were going to straighten things out in the beds. And then I went back to work. It's not like going back to work was a surprise. My weddings that had been postponed were all rescheduled for, for fall, August, and September and October of 2021. But I had started all these projects, and then I was going back to work producing. I produce really large-scale weddings, and I do the floral and all the design and coordinate the lighting and the linens and uh, how how a wedding looks is kind of my, my purview. So I just kind of had to walk away from the vegetable garden. It was just a mess. I kind of gave up on the vegetable garden for the, for the year. And that brings us to where we were in February of 2022 when I brought you guys out here. Talked everybody through the design process of what I wanted to achieve out here. I had this vision for this high peaked glass house with a shed attached to it. I'm still obsessed with all the inspiration that I saved from this project. But um, 
you know, the majority of what my issues were, were we didn't have a great place to put trash cans. Um, we recycle more than we throw out. So we have a couple big recycling bins. Um, I needed a place that was not a temporary greenhouse. But um, and I needed a shed. Uh, we were trying. I have so much gardening stuff now that you using the garage as primarily the floral workroom in the times when I'm doing weddings is not conducive to leaving all of my gardening supplies, my empty pots, my trays, things like that. Um, I also have a fair amount of power tools. I do some custom building for weddings. I, build a lot of stuff for myself here so I have a lot of tools so a shed seemed really important and so I set out uh, with a $25,000 budget to renovate uh, this is about 2,000 square feet of my um, I'm just under a quarter acre I know it looks a lot bigger it's because I'm basically I have a, like a clear city lot for my garden before Karen comments and Tommy Troll pop in. $25,000 is a lot of money. It's a lot of money for me. Uh, I'm privileged to have the ability to spend this kind of money on my garden and my home, and I'm certainly not saying that you have to. Um, I'm sharing what my overall budget was because I think that information is helpful to people, and I think in influencer culture, it can be really hard to understand what things actually cost, even if somebody's getting them at a discount or for free. A lot of times, people don't want to talk about price. I'm not saying that you have to do what I did. I'm just telling you this is what I did, and this is how much it costs because... As you can see, if you watched any of the greenhouse video, it can be really hard to find pricing on what certain projects cost. And I have a husband that is the budget police, and it's helpful for me to have this information and go to him and say, like, well, this is how much a high-end greenhouse costs, and this is how much a low-end greenhouse costs. And it's hard to find that info. So I'm not saying you have to spend that money. I'm not saying you should spend that money. I'm just letting you know that that was my budget, and <laughs> that's what I was working with. Um, that amount of money represents a lot of work for me and my husband, so it's not like we take it lightly. I set out with this budget. Um, it was based on uh, past construction projects and things, uh, some experience, a little bit of research on what things cost. But as you can see, if you watch any of the design videos, the, the project kind of evolved as I really looked and studied specifically this image of what needed to be fixed in this part of the garden. It was really important that I get the orders placed specifically for the greenhouse because they're having a moment now and also supply chain and materials are affecting things. So I knew if I placed an order for a greenhouse, it might be up to a year before I received it. So while um, gardening definitely teaches you some patience, I knew that I kind of wanted to try to have my greenhouse in place for this spring. So I worked on a large scale wedding actually in April and had placed the greenhouse and shed orders. And so basically job number one after wrapping up my wedding for, for the year was to get the shed foundation in because I knew that the shed would be available in six to eight weeks after I ordered it and uh, I needed a foundation for it. And there's a couple companies. I live in Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania. We have a lot of Amish shed builders and there are companies that do shed foundations pretty much exclusively, like kind of hand in hand. And I got a couple quotes, but like everything I do, I, I really had some specific ideas of how I wanted it to be, but I also needed some flexibility. I had ordered the greenhouse, but I really didn't want to build the greenhouse foundation until I had the parts here because I was getting a custom size. I, I got a 10 by 10 square. This model usually comes in 10 by 15. So while they had a good idea of what the measurements would be, I felt that it would be a lot better to build the foundation with the actual parts here. So after getting a couple of quotes in the $2,500 to $3,500 range um, for the foundation that I wanted, and it would be uh, pressure treated timbers on the ground with gravel, which didn't feel like 
I mean, I could paint them, but it just didn't feel like the aesthetic that I wanted. I have a lot of this like Corton steel, this rusty steel in my garden. So I, I started exploring what it would take to do it myself. And it was gonna need uh, uh, some kind of excavator and a lot of work, basically. Um, but I realized that we could use the the excavator. I ended up getting a tractor with a bucket and a and a blade, box blade, and um, a dump attachment. And so I realized that for the cost of what I was being quoted for the foundation, I could get this machine for a month and use it for other things. I ended up doing the shed foundation myself, which I immediately hit. A snag in the form of huge, huge amounts of roots from that maple that had been there. Um, I guess I had always thought maples had really shallow roots, and I guess they do, but this one was, you know, 175 years old. Um, the roots were deep, wide, heavy, much too much for my little mini cooper of a tractor that I had rented. So, um, it took me about a month or so to get the shed foundation finished, which I was like, oh, I'll have this done in a weekend. My family says I'm a time optimist. It's probably the only thing I'm optimistic about is how much time things will take. But anyway, um, I ended up finally getting the foundation done. We needed to get um, a guy with a huge stump grinding machine, remote control battle bot kind of thing come in and grind a lot for me um i learned a lot about working on an elevation i had actually i've actually built patios and done some like light grading stuff before but my garden my whole property is on a downhill and i'm to, you need to make these things level so um i learned a lot about that actually where we're sitting in the raised bed portion of the potage uh, is sunk into the ground a bit to work with the elevation and that was probably the most challenging thing that we did getting eight beds to line up and be level and square around a mud pit I actually don't know that I believed that we would ever get there but they're there they work they need to be topped off for sure um, but the irrigation, everything got done, and I had a firm goal of trying to have everything finished, one, by the end of June, because I had ended up renting the tractor for an extra month, and I didn't want to pay another month's fee for it. And two, we were taking a, vam a family vacation at the end of June, the first vacation since 2020, and it was really important to me that I not come home to a giant mess. I wanted to get this place to a stopping point so that I could just let things grow for a while and wait for the greenhouse to show up. And so it was a ton of work, especially last week before vacation, but I did get everything planted. Um, got a table and a few chairs and my husband and I were eating salad out of the garden by the time we came back in July. So it has worked out incredibly well. It's just <laughs> been, it was very difficult. It was a, a harder project in a lot of ways than I thought. It, um, just the scale of the work and the gravel and the weight of things and needing a piece of heavy equipment and all of that was all very new to me. And it, it, it's been hard. It was, this was a hard, hard project. And that maybe I feel more tired today because I was working on the pavers for the flooring and they're so heavy. And I woke up feeling like I had been in a car accident. Um, there's just no amount of getting in shape to lay 100 pound pavers. I heard, uh, I heard in midsummer that my greenhouse wasn't coming until the end of October, which was great. I didn't really particularly feel like working on it in the blazing hot sun if it had arrived in August, and October sounded really good to me. The greenhouse arrived at the end of October, and being a time optimist, I thought, okay, I'll have it done by Thanksgiving. Uh, we have a big house, we have family in the area, we host Thanksgiving. <laughs> It's so laughable when I think about how what was actually in place by Thanksgiving. I think the frame was up, but I was like nowhere near getting to the glass. 
So um, as I mentioned, I have a customized kit. My um, greenhouse is made by Janssen's, a Belgian manufacturer that's been around for 100 years. They are imported into the U.S. by a single distributor. And then I bought my greenhouse from a greenhouse supplier who has the ability to order from a lot of different manufacturers. So um, when you... <laughs> After you order, you're dealing primarily with the import company. And um, look, I get that there's lots of stuff going on in the world. It's hard to staff. Greenhouse demand is through the roof. But there was a, a lot of missing pieces and hardware. Now, the company has been totally great about getting me things. But each time I would run into an issue, it's, you know... A week or so, each time there was a snag. Not to mention... We've had an incredibly mild winter, but the weeks where it's been cold, it's been very, very cold. And it's it's hard to work with glass when it's extremely cold. Your hands don't work as well. So I was limited in what I could really get done during, during the last few months. But um, eventually, <laughs> I got the frame up. And then a few weeks later, I had gotten the glass up. It's now... Well, it's the second week of February, but I didn't actually get the, the doors with glass attached to the greenhouse until this week due to, to a couple of issues. And when a project just goes on and on and on like that, you're just sort of over it. <clears throat> but I, I think I got my like mojo back when I finally got the doors working. Um, oh, I still have to straighten out the hinges on the hinge door side, but <laughs> we just won't look at that side. It's now the second week of February, and I can shut the doors on the greenhouse. Um, it was actually quite toasty in there yesterday. I'm not sure how accurate my new smart thermometer is, but at one point it said it was 90 degrees in there. And it had to have been over 70 because the window vents on the roof opened. And I think they're set for 72. So it works. It's pretty toasty when it's sitting in the sun for the day. It's been, it's been a, a, a long project, <laughs> but it is nice to see it working. It's nice to see that the shed is functioning as it needs to be. Having power out here makes things incredibly helpful. I can sometimes be a night owl, so having the ability to come out here and work not in the dark for an hour or two is just so great to me. Um, it, it has actually, I think, perked me up because, you know, like a lot of people, I don't do well when the days are so short. So having that ability to like extend my evening work is really great for someone like me. So I guess you're wondering how I did with the budget. Well, <laughs> whether it's a good idea or not, I'm actually going to take you guys through in the next video, I'm going to take you through the entire line item budget for this project. And we'll see how I did. Subscribe if you haven't already. And so I started just turning the camera on and I guess it's going to be like a weekly like garden vlog. Like here I'm starting anemones. Here I'm starting seeds. I'm going to try to just start putting them out regularly. YouTube doesn't love it when you just stop posting. I don't particularly love it when I stop posting because there, I am doing things. It's just hard not to feel like they're not that interesting. If you're here, you like plants and flowers. And that's basically what my whole world is these days. And my new cat. Um, if you have followed me for a little while, you know that I lost my studio cat, my flower kitty Muppet, in April. I had a hard time designing this year without her. Uh, just because I was so used to her <laughs> going for for the flowers as food. I was looking for a long-haired tortie kitten, and she had been posted on a cat website, matching website, for, like, the day before. And, oh, man, she is just a joy. She is so sweet and smart and funny, and she has her own Instagram now, if you're a cat person and you want to check her out. And um, she really has brought a lot of joy to my life. All right, guys, I know this was a little bit of a ramble. I hope you enjoyed it. I look forward to sharing gardening projects with you guys. I'm sort of anxious about sharing the budget video because, you know, the internet. 
but I feel like it's important. I had a budget. I tried to stick to it. And I think it's a good idea to see what things cost if you're planning to do something similar. So you can make the choices that work for your budget. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.